how do you read this at the moment in terms of where we're at? Well, the Keir Starmer stuff is, is complex because, of course, he has a huge problem with the Muslim vote, which we saw, which I've been writing about for two years, and I've said that this will get worse and worse and worse and worse. <coughs> and it was it was obviously made more difficult, far more difficult for Starmer by the October the 7th Hamas incursion into Israel, invasion of Israel. Um, so he has been treading very, very carefully. And I noticed, I mean, you mentioned Jess Phillips earlier, that, uh, that that she complained again <laughs> about men who had gathered to to protect their homes and to fight the far right, didn't name who they were, you know, and didn't say that they should go home and that they were causing trouble as well. So we're, we're getting two-tier policing, sure. We're getting two-tier politics, and we're also getting two-tier reporting. Um, you know, if you listen to the BBC, far right thugs, uh, Muslims attempting to protect their own properties. You know, it's not really like that. Yeah. Um, and and people ought to be told that it's not really like that. That being said, I have no time whatsoever for the protests. I don't think they signify much. I think certainly in my area where they've been kicking off, it's been largely football hoolies uh, who want to bust up with the, with the old bill. Um, the, the, that's the vast majority of them. And it's an inchoate protest and they're protesting of course about to the wrong people it's not the muslims fault that they're that, that so many have come here and and we failed to integrate them properly it's the fault of governments successive governments including of course the labor government now and previous labor governments we've done nothing about it nobody voted for it nobody wants the levels of immigration which we've had um and yet and yet it's all happened but i don't think that these these riots are are kind of are rooted in any sort of ideology at all, whether it be far right or anything else. Yeah, no, I would I would agree completely with that. I think to me, what is really interesting, I mean, this will, I would imagine, sort of die out over the coming days. Um, yeah, but as soon it, as football season starts. Yeah, indeed, yeah, absolutely Seriously. right. Well, yeah. which is which is next weekend. Uh, but yeah. but of course the the response, as you rightly identified, uh, Rod. From the from Keir Starmer, I, I mentioned this sort of smug air bubble that he seems to have over his head, almost like I'm not going to move from what I'm saying. I'm not going to understand the nuances. I'm not going to understand everything you've just said because I'm a bloke that's got a whacking great big majority, so I don't have to. Well, I think that's right, um, and he would also. I, I mean, it's, 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 electorally, it's a very complex thing. Immigration is a big issue. And the majority of the population, an overwhelming majority of the population, want to see immigration reduced. Mm. And when asked in previous opinion polls whether they think immigration has improved or or worsened the country, uh, a small majority say it has made it slightly worse. Uh, so, so you have all that on one side. Uh, but all you get from the left is this continual crowing about how diversity has been wonderful. Uh, and you're never allowed to challenge that. And to challenge that, you immediately get called far right or racist. And yet yeah. it's it's not. It's simply a matter of looking at the economy, looking at social unrest, looking at crime figures, uh, and looking as well at the, at the many things which immigrants have brought into the country and which have been beneficial. You know, it's it's a balancing act. And I think we've got it terribly, terribly wrong in the last 30 years. What are you... 20 no, I, I, 100%. And I, what do you make of the sort of social media side of it? Because I was, we were having this discussion earlier where you know, social media 20 years ago was kind of a bit of fun and people went on there, they said stuff, they could say yeah. some rude words and no one was going to tell them off. But, of course, it's now taken on a, a whole new uh, position, a new status, as it were, as a as kind of published entity. Uh, people now take legal action against things that are said on social media. But the guy that runs it, Elon Musk, sort of sit, loves a bit of free speech. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but of course, he's now being accused of inflaming things and 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 attacking the British government and you know taking a side, as it were, and making the problem worse. Does he or does social media have a responsibility, or do we just leave it over there and say, well, look, it's just the Wild West bit. Don't worry about it. Nothing, nothing is going to happen here. Um, I think what Elon Musk said was absolutely right, to be honest. Uh, I, I found no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, and I think it's something that Keir Starmer should reflect upon rather than simply coming out with, with platitudes and the usual boring old shibboleths. Uh, however, social media, yeah, I, I, I mean, 
what it enables people to do, and I dare say that some of these football hooligans who are probably now in their 50s and 60s wish they could have had social media back in the 80s when they were at their peak uh, and organising meets across the country. Uh, it would have been far easier to do so. And I think that that has happened. That has clearly happened. The, I mean, the other thing with social media is that it polarises debate. Um, and because of its instantaneousness, because uh, because people only have a, a minute or two to, to respond, they don't think about what they're responding, you immediately get two violently opposed camps. And that's true on almost every issue yeah. these days. It's true on vaccines, it's true on immigration, it's true on the environment. Uh, because people paint themselves into corners and will not back down. And they, you, you, never see, you never see a rational discussion on social media yeah. because there isn't the time to do it, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, and so I think, sure, of, of course you're right, mate, that the social media has, has made the situation a lot, lot worse uh, <clears throat> with regard to this and regards to many other things in society. It's a... It's, uh, I mean, Twitter is a convocation of morons. It's just <laughs> the most appalling yeah. forum. I, I think the figures are something like that 8% of people on Twitter provide something like 70% of its content. Yeah, yeah. It's continually jabbering, um, particularly lefties, I have to say, on Twitter, uh, who, who dominate this, this sphere, and which, which I would have thought Elon Musk... It's about time he got to grips with this. Well, indeed. 